Hey guys, welcome to I've Never Said This Before with me, Tommy D'Addario. Today's guest is the super talented Edvin Riding. Now, Edvin is one of the biggest breakout stars on Netflix, starring in Young Royals, which is a Swedish teen drama romance set at a fictional elite boarding school. Now, the show primarily follows Edvin, who plays Prince Wilhelm of Sweden, and his romance with fellow male student Simon Eriksson, and all the drama which results. And let me tell you, there is a lot of it. Edvin grew up in Stockholm, Sweden, and started acting at five years old, and a humble brag on his behalf, he became a Forbes 30 under 30 lister in 2022, which is not an easy title to obtain, and he managed to graduate high school during his rise to superstardom. He is now working on several different projects, including a third and final season of Young Royals. I know, I know, what are we going to do without the show? Edvin is such a deep and soulful guy. And I know you are going to really enjoy hearing a different side to him throughout this conversation. So let's see if today we can get Edvin to say something that he's never said before. Edvin, my friend, it is so good to be (laughs) hanging out with you. How are you today? Likewise, I'm good. I'm good. It's been a beautiful day here in Stockholm. I'm happy. Spring is coming. Oh, I I love that. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm, I mean, I should be kind of banning myself because am I talking to who BuzzFeed said is the next Meryl Street, Viola Davis and Denzel Washington? <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. It's up to me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> up to you, but what an honor. I, I, I read that yeah. article not too long ago. and was like, that's my man. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. That must feel good. Huh? Yeah. It's been, uh, it's always like, a, it's a big honor. Obviously you, you get a little frightened at first, but then you like, take a breather and then you realize it's it's truly is like a huge honor and uh it's something great to build from you know yeah yeah well well deserved you are somebody who means so much to so many and and it's largely due to the show young royals which came out and and we're in two seasons now this show has taken the world by storm it is one of the hottest shows on netflix people just love it to death so much i want to bring it back for a minute what was it that made you say when you read that initial script that pilot man i have to be a part of this series well you know it's it's it was actually quite funny because uh i was in like a weird period uh in my life where you know covid had just hit um the world a couple months earlier and and the, and I was like at a stalemate, you know. I mean, it's weird for me as a twenty year old to say that, but you know, it's it was. Uh, I was feeling pretty like uh, restless, and then I got this call for this this audition, and and it just it felt great. Like it was truly just intuition. I think um, if we're gonna break it down, I read the script and I was like, yeah, this is sh- sure. It's all yeah, you know. It was fun because, you know, I've heard my, my coworker Omar talk about it and he was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be a hit, you know? Uh, and I read it and was like, yeah, we can, uh, we can do something out of this. I really think with the teamwork that we had during season one and season two, um, I think that's like the major, major thing that, that made it what it was. And I think also that's like what made me, uh, want to do it. I love that. It's a queer love story, man. I mean, I, grew up i'm a millennial and i never had anything like this to watch i mean we had will and grace but it was a very different type (laughs) of show and it was great and i love the representation there but it wasn't this this love story i mean do you feel ever that responsibility of of being in a show that that means so much to so many uh yeah i'm not gonna lie like it's 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 definitely it's like it's it's huge for me and it is a big responsibility like all these people writing and saying like they feel seen uh, by this show and by, by our portrayal of these characters. It's, it's massive, you know, and I, like, I feel seen by them as well. Like it's a very, I I haven't spoken about it too much, I think, or maybe I've just been, been bad at articulating it, but it it truly is like a give and take situation with, with us uh, in the cast and our audience. Like we, they make us feel seen and, and, apparently we make them feel seen. And it's like, I think it's a big responsibility for us because we're like in the spotlight and we want to take care of these people as much as possible. And it's a movement and and that comes with the responsibility, you know? Oh, a hundred percent. I think that's such an interesting way to look at it. You know, yes, the audience feels seen through your work, but 
you feel seen through them. Talk to me more about that. That's such an interesting, interesting way to put it that I really haven't heard before. Yeah, I mean, well, I've been thinking about it these last few weeks. Like we're in early, early, early prep for uh, season three right now. And all, I'm starting to like slowly growing into Wilhelm again. Uh, and I've been thinking about it. Like it's, we have such an intelligent audience. They're like, they're like on a high level intelligent people like they can analyze the show and they can analyze not just our story like i see them interacting with other shows as well like heartstopper wednesday and the way they're like dissecting these stories and and finding like symbolism it's it's beautiful and some of these things are like just things that we as actors are maybe you know i can only speak for myself but the things that we like to come we figure it out in the moment. We just do something and we feel like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that makes sense. Cause Wilhelm's this person and he would do that. And then you just do it. And, and they really, um, they pick up on that and it's beautiful. Like they, 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 I think they see our like craftsmanship and that's mm. huge for me as an actor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really special relationship to have with the viewers of a, of a show that you're creating and you're bringing to life. I think that's super, yeah. super cool. Um, and obviously everybody knows that you and Omar are thick as thieves, super tight. <laughs> he, um, yeah. he, of course, plays Simon in the show. Why was he the right guy to play opposite you? Like what made him that guy? He's many things, but mainly he's a very brave person. Um, and he is brave and like, almost every aspect of his life. Like he's very, he's daring. He, he wants to do stuff and he wants to try them. And, and that's like very fundamental, uh, for an actor to be able to, to be brave, you know? And, um, I felt like I saw that the first audition we did together. Um, cause I was, it was like his first, but it was my, maybe it wasn't his first, maybe it was his second or something. I had done a few at least, you know, and, and I was like in the moment I was trying this improvising stuff and he just followed and he like, he, he pushed it in another direction. Like we were just playing with each other, playing with these emotions. And, and it's not easy to do that. Uh, if you've never like properly acted before. Uh, and yeah, I really, really admire that about him. And you didn't know him during those early auditions, right? No, no. I knew who he was. He was, he's like, he's, been a celebrity in Sweden for a few years. Right. Uh, and I went to, to see him. It's 10 years ago now. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I went to see him when he opened for Justin Bieber in Stockholm 2013. Uh, and uh, his like musical career was, was huge from there, you know, up until uh, Royals and it's only been growing. So I knew who he was, but I, I didn't know him personally, you know. So how did you establish such an insane bond and, and, and develop that chemistry on screen? Because you guys together, I mean, it, it's so believable. We as an audience believe you are truly in love. And that's not always easy to achieve as, in my opinion, as a viewer, when I watch certain shows, it's, you know, kind of like, okay, yeah, they're, they're doing the job of having to be in love. But I watch the two of you and I say, no, these, these guys look like they are in love. So how did you form that bond? Was it a pretty easy thing to do? Firstly, thank you. That's very kind words. Um, it was, um, it wasn't easy, you know, I mean, it's never easy to, or sometimes it is, you know, with Omar, I think it was actually, cause, um, like I said, he's brave. I I'd like to consider myself as a brave person as well. <laughs> um, and, uh, we kind of had to, like, it was, um, it was like a force of nature in some way. Um, Cause he's, he's very open and brave and I'm, I'm, I'm very like intrigued by those types of people. And we were working all of these long hours and, and day in and day out. And we were doing these beautiful scenes and we had our director, uh, who is like, or directors, they were, they were really like helping us out with understanding these scenes and this relationship and that, I think that created like a trust between me and Omar and trust is like, I usually say like the two most important things when it comes to working in the film industry or maybe three things. It's like, it's trust, it's communication and it's respect. And, um, I think me and Omar found that with each other pretty quickly. 
I love the development of your character in the two seasons. I imagine for you, it must be a super fun role to play. What do you love about playing the prince? Wow. Uh, I love, uh, it's very challenging, honestly. I mean, uh, he's, he's grown a lot since the first episode of season one. Uh, and he's, it's been like a roller coaster so far. Uh, and that's very challenging. And I think mainly that's like the funniest, the, the most fun part of it. Um, but he's like, he's so sensitive and it's always like, I, you feel like it's rewarding for you as a person. I feel like it's rewarding for me, like as a person to portray Wilhelm, cause like he's so sensitive and emotional in a very, uh, in a very good way. Like it's not, it's very anti macho thing. And I think that's important to portray as well. And, and for me as an actor to be able to like go into those, that kind of lifestyle and, and places, it's rewarding for me as a person, you know, I learn a lot by working with young Royals and that's great. Like that's not, um, it's not usually like that. I think. Yeah, I think, well, I think it's, it takes a special kind of person to, to be aware with the environment and the work that they're doing to actually learn something from it, right? It's not like you go to work, you put on this character and you leave and you're kind of like, that's it. Like you want to grow, you want to learn, you want to be somebody who's continually improving yourself. At least that's what I gather from our conversations, um, which I think is, is a really unique trait and quality to have in this industry. I know that season two this character um you know he 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 goes through some things and i know you've commented on on how you've kind of grappled with how you view your character in season two talk to me more about that well i this this created kind of created quite a stir on on uh, social media when i said this at least with our audience uh because they defend wilhelm uh really you know really really much and um what i've been like when i say i've I've, i had a hard time understanding well um, it was like on a very like fundamental but also it was kind of abstract because i thought he was very selfish um a lot of the time in in season two um he was mainly thinking about himself and his own problems he wasn't thinking about uh simon and his problems and and that's you know it's frustrating reading that you know seeing that character in front of you is like i wouldn't want to be friends with that kind of person i think people can change you know but um it's a very it's a very um pessimistic way of life i think and uh that was a hard time like understanding but then i i had long conversations with our uh, our writers and and directors and uh eventually i figured it out i think uh, I don't know if our audience know what I mean yet, but they will one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's cool that you, you get to explore different sides to this character, right? Like that must yeah, be fun yeah. for you. It is, you know, it's, it's always funnier. Like, you know, people are, are so like complex, you know, we have different, different ways of talking when we're with different people, we have different ways of moving. Uh, we, we, we laugh different with different people and just, you know, that's like the, the outer layer. Imagine like the inner layer It's way more complex. And, and that's, that's like reality. So portraying that is speaking of like rewarding for me as a person. That's also like, I learn a lot by doing that. Cause it's, that's what it is in real life. Like how, how does Wilhelm control his feelings pretty badly sometimes? Maybe I shouldn't do it like that. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's right on. I think it's a interesting um, study on human behavior when you kind of dive into a character <laughs> like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, it is. It's, I find that so interesting. Like the human mind, it's, it's powerful and yeah. scary, um, but it's beautiful at the same time. So I tried to, to everything I know about psychology and, um, behavioral science I try to put into my character work so if you can look back at your work over the last two seasons is there a scene or a moment that was so meaningful for you you wish you could relive it and and do it all over again because you so enjoyed doing it and on the flip side is there a scene that you wish hmm, I wish I had another shot at that I feel like I could portray it a little differently 
like I enjoy most of my time. I'm thinking about which scene I like the most, not which one I <laughs> hate the most. Um, <laughs> no, but I think um, the the football field scene or soccer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, depending on that, where you live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that scene in season one um, for me as an actor was very fun to do. We were improvising a lot, and I had a really nice collaboration with our director for that episode and um, with Omar. And um, I think I, yeah, that was really, that was fun. I don't think I want to do it again. I want to like be in that moment watching myself doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think I could do that exact same thing again. Um, Cause it's so, it was so like intuitive, um, but it was fun to do. Uh, and if I get another shot at one scene, probably some, some scenes in, in like the early, early stages of season one, it was a weird time coming into the first season. Uh, and some of those scenes were, were pretty difficult to grasp around. And we had like issues with postponing these scenes because of COVID and stuff. So uh, if I have to say one, maybe the, the scene in episode one of season one, there's this scene in the car, uh, where Wilhelm he finds out that he's going to start at uh, Hiliska at the school. Uh, and he's really pissed at this, uh, this, this uh, Royal family staff member. If, if I have to pick one scene, I'd pick that one. Very cool. I always find it so fascinating. The, the inner workings of artists brains and, and how they, <laughs> how they view their work. So thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's so cool that you started as this Swedish actor and then you hit this international level of fame with the show, even appearing on Jimmy Kimmel here in New York City, which yeah. is just so cool. So yeah. what, what are you the most proud of with your work on this show? I think I'm the most proud of like the way we've, we've reached out to the audience, like the way we've connected with our audience. I've been saying this now for two years soon, but it's so majestic it's monumental it's like for me it's like it's such a, a feeling of comfort in my chest like the relationship that this story has with its audience is it's so beautiful and it's so like it's it's real you know it's a movement and um you can dissect the whole period down to different obviously i'm super super proud to have been on Fallon. i think we honestly i think we were the first we're the first Swedish show to be promoted on Jimmy Fallon. Um, and, uh, that's huge, you know, but, but there's like so much more, um, to it than, than just like being able to, to travel the world with this show and meeting all these people. Uh, I think that that relationship with the audience is, is, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I agree. I see a lot of the comments surrounding the show and, and how this show has helped so many people. You know, I often wonder if I had a show like this, I'm 30, how old am I? I'm 37 now. If I yeah. had a show like You're this. You're looking day over 25. Oh, um, <laughs> like, I, I, you don't have to, you don't have to lie. I mean, I appreciate that, but thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I wondered if. I would have maybe come out earlier if the show existed. Yeah. You know, I, I came out what's considered late now. I mean, I know there's no right time, but I was in no, no. senior of college. And and I think yeah. it's so great. So many people are coming out earlier and earlier and on their own time. And I just wonder if I had something like this, would that have helped me? And I think it probably does help a lot of people. You know, it's powerful. Yeah, yeah it is like that's that I'm really moved by that. Wow. Um, but it also like it's this is like it's all part of like a, a big process. I really believe that at one point there will be no like coming out late or coming out early or, or anything like that. Cause people won't have to come out cause it won't matter. Uh, like yeah. for real, it won't matter uh, who you love or, or what your pronouns are or what you identify as. It's, I mean, that's what we're working against and, and Royals young Royals is, is evidently it's a, a part of that process and i'm i'm super proud to be part of that um little puzzle piece you know yeah, yeah it's it's important and I, I think man what a refreshing world it will be when we don't uh, have to yeah. do any of those things you just talked about <laughs> i know i'm i'm ready for that time and in fact yeah. i i remember seeing a tweet um you know when i i believe your your friend kit connor kind of got publicly you know 
um, outed, if you want to call that, as this bisexual. And he came out and made a statement. And you said, my heart goes out to you, right? Or you, along those lines, you said your heart, you feel for him. Um, because no one should be put in that position, right? We should all just, we shouldn't have to do that. No, no, it was, um, that was painful to watch, you know? Um, and, um, Kit's such a sweet guy too. Um, I mean, no one deserves that, but at this age too, I mean, we're, we're the same age and, and, um, and to be like forced into, to coming out or like pro- proclaiming who you are, like you are, you owe people that it's, it's such a weird way of looking at the world and, uh, fellow human beings. Um, yeah. It's yeah. weird, you know? Yeah. And that's, I think showing your support was a, a really amazing thing to do. And I, I, I of course think it speaks huge, huge volumes of who you are as a person. And, um, I just thought that was cool. So I agree with you. I think when there's a time where we don't have to do that, it's going to be awesome. Um, speaking of Kit Connor, who of course stars in Heartstopper, there's a lot of buzz and chatter around the internet. I don't know if you said something in an interview once. Oh, or, yeah. <laughs> but everyone's wanting some sort of crossover. So for everyone who's listening, if you haven't seen Heartstopper, it's another amazing queer love story on Netflix. Um, season one was brilliant. I believe season two wrapped and that should be coming out hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people want to see, you know, Kit and, and Joe, the two actors in the show and, and you and Omar do some sort of crossover. Maybe it's a double date in one of the shows. I don't know. I mean, come on, come on what's happening? Are we doing anything? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, I, we said that in an interview, um, <laughs> a couple of months ago and it, it created kind of, it was a bit of mayhem afterwards. Um, I don't think like, I'd love to like do something with, with kid and Joe and me and Omar. Uh, I don't know if we should do it in character though. Um, but I mean, we share a lot of, um, audience members, the two shows. And, um, I think we should, um, we should, yeah, I want to, you know, we should do something. I don't know if a crossover is the right way to go, but you know, it would be fun to give something to the, to the audience, you know? Well, if you do a crossover, I know season three is sadly the final season of your show, which is breaking hearts across the world. So maybe, maybe you and Omar are foreign transplant students in their school, <laughs> and then you just have to be part of their next season. There, done. I'm a writer. Well, now. there you have it. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> Writing so, it down right now. There we yeah. go. There we go. I'll call, I'll call my people. We'll call your people. We got this. Perfect. Yeah. We'll sort it out. Yeah. So you said that you're getting ready for season three. Um, is there anything you can share about the season? Uh, not story wise. It's, um, but it's, it's like, it's the final season. Uh, we, we've, we've like, it's, it's out there in the open. Um, but I gotta say like the, the beautiful part of, of this art form is that we, we produce something and we portray these characters that, amazing people have written and were directed by great people. And there's like hundreds of people working with this. And we, we like construct this, this art piece and then we give it to the audience. So even though like season three is the last, last season that we'll produce like the story, the characters, the, the world that these characters live in, they belong to the audience mm. uh, and they will forever and ever. Um, and um, so hopefully that calms some people down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, cuz i want them to know like these these characters are are them you know they can they can write these these beautiful i've recently gotten a bit into these uh, fan fictions that they've been writing uh and it's quite interesting uh the the creative ways they they place these characters with each other but uh um that's like that's the future for young royce i think it it belongs to the audience oh 100% and i know i know you might know, but you can't say anything. But do you hope that your character, Prince Wilhelm and Simon, are end end game? Do you hope that they end up together? Well, of course. Like I believe in love, um, but I, you know, we'll. I don't know what happens. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I'm rooting for. I'm a huge lover of love. I've um I've been with my husband now for eight years. Um, Congratulations! So I, I, wow. Thank you. Thank you. I I, I just. I love love. So I, I know they're characters, but I am personally rooting for the two of you. <laughs> That's good. That's nice. 
I think I think you're not alone. I think. But, I uh, think so. Just a hunch. Just a hunch. Yeah, just a just hunch. A hunch. No, um, but we'll see. I mean, I uh, we were still a few months away from um, from shooting, and uh, anything can still happen with the story. So, so, um, and um, I think either way, um, they've gotten so much from each other. These two characters, um, they've yeah. learned so much. Like I said, like Wilhelm's, he's done such a journey since season one, episode one. Um, and that journey is, is, uh, continuing in the third season. So, and the same with, with Simon, it's, um, they're like developing and learning from each other in, in a very beautiful way. So in a way they will always be end game, you know, even if they don't end up together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree. I think you're, yeah. I think you're coyly trying to say you're not going to give away any spoilers, but uh, <laughs> that they'll always be a part of their life, each other's yeah, lives, yeah, no matter yeah. what happens. <laughs> I see the game you're playing with me. It's all good. Well, I get it. <laughs> I've been media trained. You know, I'm good at this. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, we can't wait for the new season. Um, I know you're, you're going to get to work on it, but who knows? Maybe even by the end of the year, we'll see it. Right. Well, we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm not in charge of, uh, setting the the di- dates for the premieres at Netflix. You have to you'll have to talk to someone else. I know we've talked a lot about the the show and the impact it's had on on the audience mm-hmm. and how also you feel so connected to the audience. But, you know, Edvin, I wonder with a show like this where there's so much noise surrounding it. And I don't mean noise negatively. I I mean it just as noise. There's a lot of conversation, mm-hmm. there's a lot of chatter, there's a lot of attention, right? It's a show that people constantly are are talking about do you right. as edvin ever feel like it's just a little too loud is it is it ever too much for you and, and how do you deal with that as as a human um the honest answer is yes obviously i mean it, it can be too much and i i think uh my my bar is pretty low um when it comes to to dealing with stuff uh whether it's positive or negative you know it it affects me in different ways uh and i've taken my fair share of breaks from social media uh i think that's like right now that's my my main um my main way of dealing with it um but you know it's 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 fun too uh, like I'm super grateful that I'm in this position and that we have this audience. Um, but yeah, it can, yeah, it can be too much sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's anything that kind of gives you this widespread attention can, can take a, take a toll on you a bit. Right. And I know you've talked about mm-hmm. how your character explores his journey with his anxiety and his mental health. And I know you're a big proponent of of putting a spotlight on the importance of mental health and taking care of yourself. What has your journey personally been like with mental health? Um, well, I've, I've, uh, I've struggled with it at times. Uh, and I've tried to like, my way of, of dealing with it is, is through education, like learning about it. Um, I studied behavioral science in high school, um, partially because I think it's, it's a great asset to have, uh, as an actor, uh, but also like as a human being, understanding how our, our brains and our, our psyche works. Um, and, um, I've also realized like therapy is like the best thing ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and the good thing about it, and I really want to say this because it, it took some time for me to realize it. But, uh, the thing with therapy is that it's, it's, um, it's proactive. Like you're working to prevent, uh, future disasters, if you like to call them that, or like you're learning how to deal with future thoughts and future emotions, uh, because you get to know yourself and you get to know where your boundaries are. And, um, that's great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in therapy now and it's, it's the best thing ever. I feel better than ever, you know? And that's, what's important. I think there is still a stigma around it. And, um, I, I went for the first time over the holidays actually. And really, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, I just had to sort through some stuff and yeah. Even though I'm such a proponent for mental health, it still took me 37 years to, to, to make it happen. Um, and 
my my therapist, she said, you bathe your body. Why wouldn't you bathe your mind? And I thought that was so cool. Wow. That's good. Yeah. You know, that's good. Yeah. So I think being good to yourself is so important. And and thank you for opening up about that. The more people that, that can do that, especially in the spotlight, the better. So that's, that's truly, truly important. Um, yeah. You said a quote about the show that I thought was really interesting. I want, I want to talk more about this quote and Uh-oh. that quote, no, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's really, really cool. Actually. You said yeah. sexuality is not the focal point of the show, which I think is a very important message to tell. Now, maybe somebody who watches a show or catches a few, you know, of the episodes or reads about it might think, well, that's not true. It's about a two men who are in a love romantic story and it's about their relationship. So it's very much about sexuality. What would you say to that? And talk to me more about your quote. Um, well, I totally understand that perspective, but uh, I just disagree. Uh, Cause the thing is these people were, we're telling a story about human beings and and human beings interacting with each other um and they come from different like they come from different parts of of society and different um places in the like social hierarchy uh and that's the issue that they face the 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 like the label of their sexuality or, or, you know, their pronouns or whatever it may be, that's never the issue for these characters. Um, it's like where it's the, it's the, the social issues around them, you know, and, and expectations and tradition. That's like, that's their problems they're facing. Um, and so therefore it's not about sexuality. It's about, you know, these, it's about a prince coming from very traditional, um, from a very traditional background, um, and very like conservative, um, traditions and stuff and, and how he deals with that while he's in love, you know, people fall in love with their young, no matter if it's a boy or a girl or whatever, you know? And I think it's interesting because it kind of goes back to your point earlier of one day, hoping that there's no coming out and there's no focus on pronouns and it's just a part of life. Right. Yeah. I mean, I understand where we're at now as a society. Um, and, and we need to, to like, we need to embrace that and do what we can right now. Like we need to educate people about, uh, pronouns and, 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 uh, different, different types of sexuality and the issues that these people are facing. We need to educate more people on that, but I think like we're walking towards a future where we don't have to label ourselves. Hundred uh, percent. I mean, we can label ourselves. You know, it's we shouldn't have to do it for someone else. That's the thing. Like Wilhelm, right. he's just in love with this boy. He's he's you know he's unlabeled. He doesn't have to. He doesn't owe anyone uh, to say what what his sexuality is. And I think that's a very like. That's a cool world to live in, you know, when you don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a world that I want to be a part of. So I think that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, are you feeling emotional as you gear up for your last season? Is it, is it hit you yet? Or you're just of kind of, course. yeah, it has hit of you. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's bittersweet. Like it really, really is. Uh, I've lived with this, this story and these characters, mainly Wilhelm then for, three years soon and it's been such a like it flipped my life upside down obviously um and so it coming to an end is it's it's emotional yeah what are you going to take from your character is there anything you're going to try to sneak off set Ooh, i've already stolen some stuff dude <laughs> you know i've Uh-oh. i've been uh yeah i've been taking some stuff anything uh, else you have your eye on that you're like i've got to get my hands on I actually, I had a discussion with Omar about this. I think, um, I feel like I, there's some stuff I want and there's some stuff like I should take with me. Like I should bring the uniform back with me home, you know, cause I won't use it. It's just, it's just a part of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see, you know, we'll see what I can, uh, sneak out, sneak out. I think the uniform has to be hung, framed, and on your wall. Oh, right. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right there on that wall. That's right where it's there. going. 
Edvin, what is something you can tell me about that you're working on just for yourself? I worry a lot about expectations,、um, and that's something like I'm truly working on. But if I if I honestly had the ability to just pop that out there and give it some love and、uh, tell it what it should.、Uh, Think and feel. I、um, I'd be a very happy man. I mean, it's just hard, you know. Expectations is weird, you know, and, and it, it grows from from rumors or it grows from from just people talking with each other, and you start to you start to feel this expectation, and you start to imagine expectations, and you're like expecting people's expectations of you. You know, it's a, it's a it's a spider web of of negativity,、um, and I'm. I really want to to be at a place where I can feel confident enough to know which of these expectations I have to care about and not, you know. So is it kind of like a fear of not living up to people's expectations? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. My、uh, my therapist, she told me,、uh, disappointing people is part of like the contract of life. Like that's just that's part of it. Wow.、Um, people will always be. Be disappointed in one way or another. That's nothing. There's nothing you can do about it.、Uh, in that sense, you have to like make sure that you don't、um, disappoint yourself. I guess.、Mm. Mm. Yeah,、um, it's, it's putting yourself first. Yeah, yeah. That's something I think a lot of people can relate to, and I think you know, piggy backing off of that, it's also having the ability in life to also say no and and to again prioritize your health and your well being. It's very important to set boundaries、um, and to to build that like integrity.、Um, it really is, and it doesn't matter like who you are. It's always important because you deserve to have your own boundaries. You know. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, can we just get a, a quote book from you? Because I feel like in the <laughs> inter- interview today, you have given us so many beautiful, well-spoken, <laughs> eloquent nuggets of wisdom that I just want on my、oh. coffee table. Thank you. Yeah, I'll make a I'll make a, a coffee mug for you with all these quotes on. <laughs> There we go. That would be a perfect way to begin every morning, Edvin. I am, <laughs>、yeah. I am so、um, just in awe of your talent and of you as a human being. I think that you have a huge, huge, huge career ahead of you, and the fact that you're so grounded and、um, in touch with the things that are important in life is only going to serve you. For the better, my friend, and I just, I just love chatting with you. That's nice. Thank you, Tommy. I, I really enjoyed t- chatting with you. You're a, you're a very nice human being. So much fun. Oh, I good, feel warm.、Friend. I feel safe. Oh,、know? I love that. That's the best <laughs> compliment ever. I love that so、yeah. much. I've never said this before. Is hosted by me, Tommy Daddario. This podcast is produced and edited by Mike Coscarelli, and executive producers are Andrew Puglisi and Katrina Norvell at iHeartRadio. I've never said this before. Is part of the Elvis Duran Podcast Network on iHeart Podcasts. For more, rate, review, and subscribe to our show. And if you like this episode, tell your friends. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tommy Daddario. 